New bombshell study about the state of the death penalty in the U.S. is out. It's titled, Rate of False Conviction of Criminal Defendants Who Are Sentenced to Death. And it was published Monday in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. They say, quote, our authors reviewed the outcomes of the 7,482 death sentences handed down from 1973 to 2004. Of that group, 117, or 1.6%, were exonerated. So we know that 1.6% are innocent, right? Hold that thought. They continue, quote, But with enough time and resources, the authors concluded that at least 4.1% of death row inmates would have been exonerated. So in other words, in the United States of America, on death row, 4.1% of the people are innocent. Now, how did they come to that conclusion? Well, they came to it... Uh, using what's called survival analysis. It's a statistics tool commonly used in medicine to evaluate the effectiveness of new treatments. And they actually just took that and changed the fields and they applied that to people on death row and they went through all these different historical records. Again, 7,482. And they were able to calculate that about 4.1% of death row inmates would have been exonerated. So what we're looking at is a situation in the United States of America where not only did we kill, oh, we got, we killed one innocent person with the death penalty by accident. And we, I say one because we did a story recently where we highlighted one of those, where we killed somebody and then now evidence comes out after the fact that the person who testified against him was paid to do it and they recanted their story and there was no evidence in the first place and they were just trying to get a conviction and so somebody was killed who was innocent, right? I gave specific example, a guy in Texas recently on the show. But it's not just like, hey, there's that one example right there. We're looking at maybe 4.1% of the people on death row. 4.1%. Four out of every hundred people on death row were like, I didn't fucking do it. I don't belong here. <sighs> That's some heavy shit, man. That's some heavy shit. Just imagine, like, we're talking about this from a statistical and a numbers perspective right now. And it still weighs heavily on our minds. But think about it on a case-by-case -case basis. Think about these people as what they are. They're individual human beings. They all have mothers and fathers. They all have life stories. They all have a background. They all have feelings and emotions. And they've been... Their entire life has been crumpled up and thrown away, discarded from the mind of the overwhelming majority of the American people. And it's like, well, yeah, there's another fucking criminal. Fuck him. Like, life's gone. Fuck you. You're done. You're done. But wait a second. There are people on death row right now that are innocent, man. Think about it if it were you. You know, th I think about it if it were me. It's hard enough to stay sane and keep your shit together when you have all your fucking ducks in a row and you have all the advantages from the beginning when you're born, you know? Imagine having your whole life change and you were wrongly convicted for something you didn't do and you're on death row. The state will kill you. They will take your life away from you. They will murder you for something you didn't do. It's unbelievable to think about, man. It's like life just becomes a nightmare. Your life becomes a horror movie. Your life's a horror movie. Like, oh, you have childhood, yay, yay, happy, happy. Oh, you grow up, some things go wrong, and boom, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Now I'm on death row and I didn't do it. It drives you crazy. Now look, the reality is, man... Are there some people that I look at and that most people look at and they just had this visceral gut reaction of like, fuck it, kill that motherfucker? I think most people have that reaction in some scenarios. Like the guy who shot up the Aurora movie theater, um, the guy, the Norwegian terrorist who killed so many children, killed like between 70 and 80 people, most of them children, like, just these gross mass murderers. We covered people on the show who killed kids, ate them, disemboweled them, and flushed their intestines down the toilet. Things that are just unheard of cruel. Like, these people are monsters, right? And 
Do I have sympathy for them? Fuck no. Am I interested in even trying to rehabilitate the worst of the worst criminals? I'm not. Because I think the liberals who think like, well, everybody can be rehabilitated, I think that's so naive that it's ridiculous. I think there are some people, I'm not saying all, I'm not even saying a majority, but there are some criminals that do some things that they're beyond even the hope of rehabilitation and all you should do is punish them and separate them from society forever because there's no hope for them to get better, right? But what we need to do is look ourselves in the mirror and ask ourselves the question, do we want to have that trade-off of we we kill some of the worst people imaginable, but the trade-off is, well, 4% of the time we kill the wrong person and we're murderers ourselves. Our own tax dollars go towards killing innocent people. And I think the answer to that question is you can't really make that trade-off because then you're saying, I'm okay with murder in some cases. Oh, okay, how open-minded of you. It's not really a debatable issue. You know, okay, if you know all the facts and you look at it, you can't come to the conclusion, yeah, fuck it, kill him anyway. Because then you're saying, I'm fine with murder. So wait, what makes you better than another murderer who just physically did it themselves? What, just because, you know, you're not physically carrying out the act, you think you're better? But we just showed you that you would be responsible and your tax dollars would be going towards it. So it's not that much different, man. So, and then putting all that stuff aside, right, it, it's not about, hey, let's protect the worst of the worst. It's about, do we want to be murderers ourself, ourselves? And the answer should be, absolutely not. But then on top of that, even from a constitutional perspective, you know, uh, the Eighth Amendment protects from cruel and unusual punishment. And I've made this argument on air before, that if you actually believe that the death penalty and torture isn't cruel and unusual, then what is? What's worse than torture and killing people? Crickets. I can't hear anything. Why is that? Because that is the worst of the worst. You can't do anything worse than that to a human being. We did torture. See Guantanamo Bay. See the CIA black sites. See Abu Ghraib. You know? And we are killing people. We still have the death penalty. So apparently, the Eighth Amendment, according to the Supreme Court, they're just like, yeah, fuck that one. <laughs> we're, we're done with that one. Put it to the side. We don't really care, but we'll ignore that one. But how crazy is that? Do we ha specifically have an amendment that bans cruel and unusual punishment? And those things are cruel, and they are by definition unusual, too, because a majority of the countries around the world ban the death penalty. And of course, a majority of the countries in the world don't torture. So they are cruel and unusual by definition, but everybody's like, no, it's cool. We're going to allow this. But you can allow it, at least if you want to abide by the Constitution. Look, if you want to change the law and allow the death penalty, I say, okay, but you have to change the Constitution then, because if we're actually going by a literal interpretation of it, well, then you can't allow those things. So it's unconstitutional, it's illegal. Uh, we oftentimes get the wrong people. I haven't even brought up the racial aspect of this, that if a white person and a black person commit the same crime, a black person is much more likely to get the death penalty. So justice is not blind. I also haven't brought up the economic aspect of this. If you have a rich person who commits the same crime as a poor person, who's going to get the death penalty more? It's not even a fucking question. Obviously, the poor person's going to get it more. The rich person can afford to pay the best lawyers in the world and come up with these bullshit, ar bullshit arguments to work around stuff. I mean, we did a story of a guy who's the DuPont heir, who has all this money, and he raped his kids. You know, fingering his little girl. Unbelievably uh, gruesome crime. Got no time. No jail time. And the judge said he wouldn't fare well. So... We're not dealing with an objective justice system where we always get the right people and we know what we're doing is right. So since that, that's the case, you can't give the state the, the power to kill people. And this study is even more evidence that points to that conclusion.